Hello everyone, happy Wednesday, and welcome to another episode of Quandries and Sundries. I'm so glad everyone liked yesterday's episode, based on the Kardashev civilization type scale. So like promised, let's talk terraforming today, a fun interesting topic that has been on my mind the last few weeks. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. I've always found the idea of terraforming so fascinating especially through the lens of science fiction. But in reality, the process right now is a hypothetical, and it's not in our power to do so right now. The reason I talked about the Kardashev scale yesterday was because I will be using it throughout this episode at various times to explain different things. Let's start off with the basic building blocks to how to make a planet habitable. Food, water, and oxygen. Those are the factors we need to think about when terraforming. Oxygen is a great place to start. In order to get oxygen, let's talk about how the Earth's atmosphere formed. Currently, the Earth's atmosphere is made up of 70% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. So that is the perfect ratio we are looking for when terraforming a planet like Mars. The Earth went through three main forms over the lifespan of the planet in order to get its atmosphere. The first stage I want to call hell. The Earth was on fire and the atmosphere was made up of hydrogen, helium, but because of the intense temperatures of the planet, the hydrogen and helium molecules would move so fast that they would eventually either evaporate or escape the atmosphere into outer space. We literally didn't have an atmosphere at all. It wouldn't even function. The second form our atmosphere took, I'll call the cooling. During this period, the oceans began to form, and so did the crust of our planet and the tectonic plates. Volcanoes were all over the place releasing different elements and chemicals into the atmosphere. They released carbon dioxide through steam. They released hydrogen and ox oxygen and they also leaked ammonium, which pumped more nitrogen and hydrogen into the atmosphere. Over millions of years, all these chemicals combined into a soup in the atmosphere, some escaping, some remaining in the atmosphere. Now for the final form, which I'll call the calm period. The carbon dioxide that was in the atmosphere from the cooling dissolved into the oceans, and bacteria began to eat at it and release oxygen through photosynthesis, and over time that bacteria grew into multicellular organisms and eventually into plants and animals. Eventually the plants did the job for the bacteria, and that's just a quick summary of how our atmosphere formed. This entire process took over 4 billion years to happen. But the question is, what would happen if man intervened? But before we even get an atmosphere on Mars, we first need a magnetic field. Without one, you cannot hope to keep your atmosphere from being burned away by the sun's solar winds. And that's why Mars is so desolate. Because it does not have a magnetic sphere. Because it is missing a crucial component, an internal dynamo. We can't exactly prove the existence of an internal dynamo because we cannot dig to the center of the earth without being burnt alive. But we have made guesses based on observations. An internal dynamo is theory goes like this. Within the planet, molten metal is swirling and moving around the inner core because of the force of the Earth's gravity at such unfathomable speed, speeds that it creates an electronic charge like a turbine that then generates the magnetic field. Now before we get back into your regularly scheduled content, if you're enjoying my content and if you're listening on YouTube, I'd really appreciate if you give this video a like, a comment, and if you're new to my content, consider subscribing. Also do not forget to hit that little bell icon so you can be notified whenever I post something new. Or if you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or whatever audio platform you're listening to this on, consider giving me a follow. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Now let us get right back into the rest of the episode. Now here is where yesterday's episode comes in. In order to terraform a planet like Mars, 
we would need to give it a magnetic field. And to do that, we would need to be at least a 1.5 or a Type 2 civilization to be able to give Mars its own internal dynamo to jumpstart a magnetic field. But because the dynamo is still a theory, we do not know how long it would take for the field to actually form. Now let's talk about the atmosphere. Mars's current atmosphere makeup is 95% carbon dioxide and 3% nitrogen. In order to make it livable, we would need to 1. Raise the nitrogen levels to at least 75% and 2. Introduce life forms to convert the dangerously high levels of carbon dioxide to oxygen. And then, then the atmosphere would be safe for us. But how would it be done? Well, I have a few ideas. First, we would have to introduce high levels of ammonium into the atmosphere to boost the nitrogen levels. If we are a type 2 civilization, we could easily either agitate volcanoes on Mars to spew out ammonium or run ammonium-rich asteroids into the red planet, jump-starting life. Next, we would need to turn that carbon dioxide into oxygen. After we complete step one, we have the perfect environment to introduce various forms of bacteria that will jumpstart the photosynthesis process with all the chemical soup floating in the atmosphere. But in the end, this is all hypothetical because the process is long and complicated. We don't know how long the internal dynamo would take to get started if it even exists. Then. We don't know how long it would take to get the atmosphere just right. Remember, for our Earth, it would take 4 billion years. But I could see human intervention shaving maybe 3.5 billion years off it, if we put enough resources, manpower, and money into it. But that's still 500 million years to fully terraform. Although, if we are type 2 civilization, maybe 50,000 years? Maybe I'm giving the human race too much credit. Anyway, it is still feasible, but I think we won't see it for a few millennia to come. I think our best option would be to find a more habitable planet outside our solar system and work with that. Well, that is all I got for today. Before I go, I would like to thank you again for joining me for another episode, and I would love to know what you think and how I can improve the show. After all... The show is all for you. So head over to my social media or just the comments and let me know how I'm doing. Thanks so much, and do not forget to share this to anyone in your life who could use a scientific moment in theirs. I hope you all join me again tomorrow for another episode of Quandries and Sundries. This is Van Masterson signing off. Till next time.